Great. And I thought maybe before um, we get to that story, yeah, that I might just sort of set up this yarn and um, yes, in please do introduce you with um, yes, with no no knowledge <laughs> of who you are. <laughs> so I guess the the um, uh, the way this connection came about was that you left a really juicy and interesting comment on our website. So some random guy comments on some random website in the interwebs, and yeah, and um. Yeah, Meg and I thought, oh, that would be a good conversation. Let's um, invite you on and um, explore some things together. And I'm hoping to um, do a little bit of a deep dive on grief because uh, I feel like that a big, big part of your um, comment was the approaches to grief. And so I'd like to get to there. But but yeah, I'd, I'd <clears throat> particularly just like to, you know, a little probably a lot more about us subscribing to our website. So yeah, I'd like to hear a little more about you and where you're at right now. You're in in you're approaching summer solstice on the other other side of the yeah, earth. So. This is it. Yeah, this this is it. Yeah, we're 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 uh, we're kind of polar opposites, aren't we? And on, on the seasonal sort of journeys. Yeah. Um, yeah well, you, my name is Joel um, Joel Gray, and and I'm uh, I'm a uh, I'm a, an artist. And but in that way, have like I like I was saying about how how I found you guys was that we were looking at um, uh, repro family as a kind of um, as a kind of uh, term for for this kind of um, journey that we were on, where we where we were uh, seeing the. Uh, the colonial kind of roots of a kind of artist as a genius as man as you know that all, all of those kind of layers and so sort of uh you know to not kind of trying to excavate below all of those and seeing the family as this kind of creative mm -hmm. uh space and so um um i must have been you know looking around on the net and found artists as family and was like right course and then started uh uh discovering you know your work and what you were doing and this like, kind of parallel journey mm. um because uh, part of my um practice before that had been I, as i was kind of leaving the whole kind of gallery you know making objects of art system it was uh through uh, a project we um that i'd been doing with a good friend of mine called the gut club which was a, a gut based, this must have been in like, you know, 2010 or something. And um, we were, we were, uh, we were foraging. So he was working with this, this forager, he called himself um, Rupert Burdock. <laughs> <laughs> and we were gathering that together and, and serving that um, in the, in the gallery space sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And uh, one of the, Things I remember was a was a was one that we went to um, Edinburgh for the festival. There we were invited to a gallery there, and we put together a free feast, as it were. Where first of all we we gathered um, forage, the food, and then we started swapping that with, with um, uh, allotments, people on allotments who understood what the kind of plants were and what they meant and also then with with restaurants so then in the in the city to create this uh kind of this this meal that we then we served as as a uh which we call stone soup which i right. don't know if you know that story yeah, yeah. i do know There's that story. Soup. so when you I, I like how you 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 talk in we in plural who who are the we um, so um, presently, so the we of the Gut Club was a was a kind of group of friends, yeah. And the, presently, the we is me and my partner, mm -hmm. and uh, and our family, yeah. Um, yeah, and and um, mm -hmm. and and those friends are still you know present, um, yeah. but the 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 uh, just uh, closer and closer circles, I guess. Mm. Uh, 
we live in in Brixton, in, in South London, Brixton Hill at the moment. Yeah, which has the kind of a windmill down the road. It's the, yeah, it's a working uh, mill. We were uh, uh, all during COVID. The windmill was was still open, and we could go down and and uh, mill and take that round to the various food banks um and and um other sort of uh you know food spaces that were still open um it you know we we were connected in various ways uh, uh for example at the moment we, we we're literally working on a uh it, where it's presented now a, a project called Brixton Eco Village where we worked with um well Alice did mostly I did a, I did a few of the sessions we worked with local schools creating uh, straw bale um models and we've been like baking tiny lego shaped straw bales I, actually doing a a, a, a cob yeah. which they could which they could kind of um mash with their you know you do it with your bare feet mm. but they could we couldn't get them doing that so we got them doing it with their fingers and 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 so so much of that they're just like oh god what is this no it's gonna you know it's disgusting but then you know once they've done it for a bit they're just absolutely you know yeah. it they, they love it they don't they don't want to stop you know because we based it on permaculture principles when we're trying to get across them what would you be in the village and then we were kind of asking them what would you what would your school have to teach you to do those things to be the thing that you would be in the village you know what would you need to take with you for it to be good and so you know you find big questions yeah 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 so you you start with and so people are like phones i need my phone i'm gonna have to have my phone or my computer or whatever it is and you're like okay so how's it what's the phone made of and then you know you're breaking it down into its kind of parts and then so so some you know we start to have engineers miners soldiers <laughs> soldiers 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 standing over yeah. the line, protecting yeah the yeah <laughs> it was like you know some people wanted to be kings yeah. and there were policemen and you know and it all you say it all had to kind of be negotiated um we didn't have long and so it was like you know you're scraping the surface but it was like uh it's insightful and you're kind of setting that seed aren't you you're setting that spark but you like you say then you know this is, these are some of the issues that we're we're here to sort of um sort of cover isn't it so we we yeah so we're on our journey to the land if you like this is our we we're um these are sort of things that we're doing on our way you know we're trying to make community you know wherever we are but ultimately we i think the realization we've had to leave we're having to leave our studio as as uh as we speak and that's been a huge kind of a, a wrench um and because we didn't really want to be out have to move out of that until until we left the city to the to to a space you know uh a, a kind of land space um but it there's this realization that that um that leaving isn't going to be clean it's going to be messy and it's going to be full full with that kind of uh grief and bad timing but for alice there's been a realization that we need that land base to be able to enact these kind of works you know what i mean this what this work uh we're both cross people yeah really we're i work stone and alice is with textiles uh so we have another project called sweatshop where we make uh we have a bicycle powered overlocker we're making sweatshirts on you know on the street so people then are you like you know do you want to sweatshirt you know just gonna take us 15 minutes you know here's here's the fabric so you know, and we're trying we're trying to incorporate like blankets and kind of recycling. Ultimately, we'd like to be able to weave the fabric that you then cut into the 
to the to, to the jumper or sweatshirt, whatever you want to call it. We are trying through the through the process of inviting people into the creative process, the craft process, mm. you know, and ultimately into the land process. Mm. It, it would be um, this is what we've realised is that if you have that base, then you then you can really build on these uh, these sort of uh, gifts and and experiences to um, allow people to even conceive of the things that we take for granted as a as a sort of a, as a space thank you beautiful stuff going on i i um just the radicalism of teaching kids in london how to cob with their fingers that's just yeah. <laughs> it was that... a great idea it was alice she, she um yeah yeah I mean, we went for funding from Arts Council and we, and none of it, it all fell through. You know, you, ha you have something, you see it, you can see it and you always just want to see it through. Yeah, I'm just sitting with a, um, a number of images uh, as you painted this story this morning or in your evening. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like you're, yeah, you're trying to give me a, a kind of sense of, um, where you are at the moment in terms of potentially being uprooted and where you are have been collectively and with your collaborations with partners and friends and, and yeah there seems like a lot of um, parallels and but I, I'm just so intrigued that you're in a major city um, I, I know Brixton I can sense where you you are and are living and I'm quite amazed actually by the the uh, quietness in your room right now it's here yeah yeah, yeah. we're like, we're up on the hill right we're we're brixton hill we're just past the um the prison yep I don't know if you know the prison that is kind of up up that so up the hill on a little back street so we're we're kind of a stone's throw i can look out my window at the at the prison oh. um uh, which has it, it has a restaurant called the clink which i've not been along to yet but you can you can right. go along and and, and uh, have dinner there. And so um, pri prisoners are preparing food and serving food. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. And they used to have a they used to have a bakery um, that would go out onto the out, out onto Brixton Market. I mean, in my heart, I'm an abolitionist, you know, in that respect to you know anything like that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is a kind of, um, it's an odd experience kind of walking past that long wall, Victorian wall, mm. uh, now with a so with solar panels on the roof, right? you know, which, which kind of gives the, it's fu funny how it gives the lie to the kind of eco-modernist, you know, we can have solar panels on the roofs of prisons kind of thing, isn't it? It's that kind of, yeah. you yeah. kind of, It'll just be the same. We've got a private prison system here in Australia that's unfolding. Um, more and more prisons are um, being yeah. privatised, or so it's yeah. a growing industry. So, um, and we have the the highest rates of recidivism in the world. We're nearly at sixty percent recidivism. So it's a closed loop. You you kind of do everything you can to make sure that um, there is no um, movement and you hold people in that story because it's actually making money um so the, yeah that's the it's it's an it's american model but on steroids at least in america there's a whole lot of groups that can go in and do are, are doing incredible work from the community um and there's a number of films that have come out um where there is a move where movement um of people and, and their grief and the, the grief stories that they hold are allowed to move. Whereas in Australia, the prisons are, are set up <clears throat> to make sure that nothing can move um, in, in terms of uh, growth of, or um, yeah, the the emotional um, the emotional stuff. And you know, a, a close family member is in. Um, a maximum security prison at the moment and um <clears throat> yeah he talks about uh not being able to um uh, 
you know, not being able to be vulnerable at all. And of course, the vulnerability is where the movement comes from. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so there, you know, it's not, there's no place in an institutional sense to be vulnerable um, for fear of incriminating yourself um, or re-incriminating yourself. Um, and of course, in, in the environment itself, which is all hard walls and screens and concrete and glass and there's um whereas there are incredible um things happening in places like norway where prisons are like islands with no fences and their um prisoners are working with animals and farming and gardening and developing all these skills in directions that they're you know obviously there's limits but um and the recidivism rates there are, are around eight percent by contrast so you know it, yeah. it's actually this sort of institutional violence that um you know we saw in the pandemic which countries um uh, instigated institutional violence against their people the most and it's the same ones that are building private prisons and it's the same it's those same our country so it's lined up yeah yeah with a kind of corporate um yeah uh yeah. what do you call it governance almost yeah Go gov corp it, it, it's it, yeah 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 this it, it is what you're you're saying what you yeah you took the, the complex the techno civility complex am i saying that right yeah hi, hyper techno civility yeah Hyper techno civility, yes, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I, 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 I fully feel I, I know what you mean by that term, and and uh, the corporatization of the prison system, uh, and 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 every other part of life is is that. I was thinking just as you were talking about uh, there's um, Chris Hedges and uh, Cornell West are both um, quite famous kind of uh, you know work famously work within the prison systems yeah. um and and do do great amazing work i, I mean I, that i've heard most about that kind of work going on in in um america from them um mm. yeah and uh it's really exciting to see cornell west going uh you know oh. or uh absolutely brilliant oh that's <laughs> so, so, so good oh my god <laughs> Can you imagine if he was the the next president of the United I States? I mean, I mean, I mean, really, the centralized systems as we have are never going to do it. And even if Cornell West did become the, you know what I mean, the president, and and if and if uh, Jeremy Corbyn had become yeah. prime minister here, it, it's it's like a and we're, I was very excited about that and went out and obviously and and. Um, I campaigned uh, as much as I could uh, for um, for Corbyn. Um, I I still remain uh, a member of the Labour Party, but it's just not the one. It's just not the way. And increasingly, I see that we, uh, and as you are, and as you have done for many years now, you know, decades even. Uh, is to show this way out uh, for people out of this and to create that kind of a, the, the, a, a sort of joyous vision of what that can be. Um, as we talk about uh, the three Fs of uh, permaculture, food, fibre, fuel, and we talk about a fourth F, which is festival. Hmm. Yeah, so so that... that um, that you, you know, that you just, you just gotta. The and and when I think about the uh, the a peasant, you know, and and that kind of medieval, um, uh, you know, the saints' days almost outnumbered the days. Okay. You know what I mean? And the festival was, uh, you know, uh, that it, it, it's inherent and it's um and and I and I see and I see that that's what you're uh talking about when you speak mother country 
and the and this interaction with the it's a kind of uh to re-establish that with the land it's kind of seeing in a way going beyond the religions mm -hmm. and to the land directly to the land which ultimately would be the foundation of those all of those did you have you ever had religion in your life <clears throat> uh, yeah i mean i i find it difficult the uh, to um um what am i trying to say yeah i upon my understanding of colonialism colonialism sorry has come through through reggae and through rastafarianism yeah so, so that was a big influence at, 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 at a kind of a key part in my life, I, you know, kind of as a teenager growing up. And I also found dance through that, you know, and, and I found, so I found the kind of rhythm of, and in the body and um, I obviously see, you know, uh, the, the, the issues around kind of, um, Rastafarianism with misogyny and you know all these kind of other sort of like and and also it being a a, a Caribbean Afro Caribbean kind of like based uh, you know um, offshoot of Christianity if you like or um, or reestablishment of it but within it are are some are, are were the basis of a critique of colonialism uh, which which I f could fully fully understand um and um and work with and it's only been recently in, in understanding the enclosures the, uh, the parliamentary enclosures which, which were kind of funded on the back of slavery you know what was capital raised from slavery uh the the, the unseated you know people uh from their land you know, there's a kind of uh, people taken from their land and then people uh, having their land stolen from them. You know, these, these two processes are kind of like churn, in the churn of, of, a, of a certain period in history. And in, in some ways, we, we are all victims of that same um, uh, process of, 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 um, of being wrenched from the land yeah yeah i i often think of um yeah the, those festivals and celebrations and the coming together and of course the argy bargy and the gossip and the, <clears throat> yes. the you know the typical sort of base behaviors that happen yeah. across all cultures um or may, maybe that's a little bit too much of a gen generalization but the um the coming together to share harvest, to share wine, and to honor some aspect, some part of the season um, or part of the year that um, needs honoring. And as you said before, the, the, the enormous amount of public holidays in inverted commas um, and yeah. the early political capitalists or economists um, really beelined onto those days they they thought that it, um peasants were um the ex, yeah the extraction of wealth could um take more by diminishing these festivals these these coming together and of course the the, the all the things that happen by people coming together the the incredible solidarity um yeah. against uh, an imposing uh power overing uh force is is power you know is is part of the power of the feudal village so to smash that and to um to yeah to attack the fest festivals and the coming together and um and then you know the slow step by step um exile of of men from from the household economy and the village yeah. economy into the factories and into the mines then you know, lost festivity, lost culture, uh, subjugated to appalling conditions, came back home via the pub, 
um, got smashed in that demoralized state, went home, beat the wife. That kind of um, trajectory of male violence that um, that is is that is kind of represented as this sort of endless, you know, time immemorial thing, rather than actually. Um, which is, you know, very similar to how a lot of Australians have traditionally treated Indigenous Australians, that the, the emptying out of the di dispossession, the emptying out of the trauma, and then just the pointing of the finger uh, to alcoholism on the street and public displays of, of that, and without any kind of historical... Um, empathy or or awareness and so i feel like we have that in our culture as well with the witch hunts it's, with the yep. witch hunts with the women and and the yep. subjugation of men um down factories and down mines and in factories it's um the different violences um uh, uh, aimed at at, at the dif different sexes yes yeah 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 and uh, my understanding is that there were many, many men, witches, as it were, witches. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see that. And, and it is literally a kind of, when you hear the the the, the reasons that they were like, yeah, there were, you know, the peasants were indolent and lazy. And if they, you know, they were, they needed to be, you know, they we need to take the land from them. But the indolent, lazy kind of like, and breeding like rabbits kind of uh, that, that, that uh, same narrative was in the in the 18th 17th century 18 1800s all the way up to the 90th is the same that's used for the whole kind of like whether it be um you know the 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 benefits cheats mm -hmm. that we the, the you know and 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 the same literally the same language is going to use that you're saying in the, in on the in in indigenous uh, yeah it's like a game plan it's a uh how do they call it you know so it hasn't changed it literally you can read the same thing said by these mps you know lords and and, and uh landlords it, it, it at that time that is being said now and it, it doesn't change it's interesting how uh, how we haven't moved on we return to that kind of eco-modernist or modernist idea of progress and science's idea that technology has moved us on, yeah, actually the the, the language is is pre-Victorian. It's uh, it, it's it, it's out out of a kind of uh, you know that industrial revolution, that sort of space that it it, it hasn't changed. I, I I keep wanting to go back to where we started. I, I have this beautiful image of um, the kids making these little cob cob houses or bricks with their fingers instead of their feet i just love the scale of that but it's just the intervention of that and of course um you know the funding failure of that because of the tech misalignment with you know neoliberal funding structures and <clears throat> it's got to be all screens and uh virtual reality rather than the tactile, the the mud, the very mud and straw that, or stubble of um, old summer sour grasses that actually rise ha, have risen our buildings up for tens of tens of thousands of generations and it's still standing, still standing. You know, yeah. these, these, some of these some of these buildings, yeah. I mean that's the that's the kind of tell I think on all of this yeah. is that, you know they still they're still going yeah and like you say you just raise it from the ground right there and then because we were talking about the violence inherent in things and I know that you know I've listened to a bit of Junker Junker Porter and 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 um, I listened to the, the podcast that you know you guys did. It, I, I, you know, I've I've listened to a lot of his podcasts, and they some of them are, are, are great, you know. And he's he's really spot on, and he's kind of hitting it. And sometimes he's just gets 
caught in a kind of um in a in a position and and um and he he he, he can be quite harsh and i i feel like it, i feel like there's a lot going on with him you know mm. uh, and that, that he's uh he's feeling this kind of he and it, strangely he's in a kind of exile isn't he from his land and his where you know kind of he, he talks about it a lot uh throughout his things and i and um i wonder if because you know in terms of the the things that he outlines in sand talk in terms of ind indigeneity being something that you get from living on the land rather than it being a kind of a caste or skin color or race racial sort of uh outward thing that it's an internal kind of uh relationship with a with a land base with 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 country with mother country and that the, in some ways you know that that he there's a frustrating kind of um uh because he knows that he knows that inherently and he, you know and and yet he's he's in in an ex, kind of exile from that at the moment da, 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 you know um uh and and there is these are difficult uh uh subjects to cover with with so much um so much sadness and pain in in them it's almost uh impossible to talk about on in a broadcast medium mm. you know that it's only something that can be intimate and mm. will that will not be ever put into that space mm. do you know what i mean there's something about i've been, I've been um you know i love the gutenberg galaxy by marshall McLuhan. i don't know if you've read any of McLuhan. i have but not that mm. Yeah, that was the one that I read, and I was just like blown away by it. And but it, they, they've been I've been uh, following a bit of Douglas Rushcroft, who who talked to a, a guy who's a kind of calls himself a netizen, concerned netizen, and he's a um, and um, the medium, the medium of broadcast of kind of that televisual and which is like, and even on even on the scale that you know we can make these things interactive mm. they are always um they they have an effect on on the message you know because he was always in the medium is the message yeah. the, there's there's a kind of skewing of meaning in the actual format yeah. of the of the the that's that's happening that doesn't allow for like you're saying the deep listening mm. and it, it, that's the question and i wonder if that's why you're thinking about kind of re, uh, you know sort of exiling yourself from the space on yeah. some level it's yeah. because there's only so much that can be done yeah uh, and maybe that it's for yeah that, that it's he took i think McLuhan talks about these things doing us services and disservices yeah. um so yeah it, it's the, it's the doubling yeah. of everything, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, because you came in and um, kind of what I really liked uh, is that you pitchforked into that um, arriving at the Church of Mother Country video and you put in this really nice pitchfork of a comment um, that's, you know, was was kind of cheekily questioning the seriousness or the or the asceticism um, and and not not um in a, in a very beautiful and and uh you know in a very beautiful and engaging way you know we get a lot of comments um that are just beautiful and encouragement and you know just supportive and then we've got you know a, a small bunch of comments that just come in um kicking heads but i i, I just love when people like yourself come in and, and you know pitchfork into the materiality uh of the compost that we've just set and aerate it and sort of like um enable us to ask questions of what we're doing <clears throat> so that, you know which led to this conversation but i i think that what meg and i have found over the years of lighting a fire in the forest and calling men and women and children at different groups um to come to that fire and to learn deep listening 
is that that's a sacred space. That's the church that I'm talking about in a yeah. in yeah. that when there's big old wah raven just outside my window, he's a creator spirit of this country. So he's coming in to have a yarn as well. Um, but yeah, just that's just over the last that that kind of particularly with the adult circles, the darkness, the fire, we call father fire, you know, this Promethean tool that was gifted to us um, that uh, the gods didn't want us to have. Um, and that sort of crafting of Pandora through the blacksmithing god Heptatus. Um, so Pandora is like crafted by the blacksmithing I think heptatus, like, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, hep, hepatus or heptatus. Um, but anyway, Pandora, the, as the first woman, is crafted by the blacksmithing god. Promethea, Prometheus steals fire to give to us to be our first technique. And Epimetheus is the... Um, it, so Zeus gives uh, Prometheus the role of handing out all the qualities to the animals and Epimetheus, the twin brother, the god of the fault of forgetting, says, I want to do that. That's that's a great job. I want to do that. And so Prometheus reluctantly, you know, hands over the basket of qualities and Epimetheus hands out qualities to all the animals on the earth, but forgets to give to save one for humans. And that's why Prometheus has to, you know, get get something so that humans have a quality. The gazelle has speed and the kangaroo has this massive tail and you know um the lion has this incredible um power and courage and but there were no qualities um left in the basket um so this is this is this twinning of technology promethean technology and epimethean amnesia that i'm so fascinated with but then epimetheus in some of the tellings prometheus in the in other tellings marries Pandora so there's this triangle between them and this is where I've arrived at Pandorian insight Epimetheus hindsight uh, the fault of forgetting um, and Promethean foresight Pandorian gut Epimethean heart because by forgetting not holding on to our prejudices or our bullshit um we can actually love so that's why i i put epimetheus in the heart center and then promethean um mind uh which is you know basically colonialism when yep. when pandora and epimetheus aren't there yep. and so it's this sort of trinity i guess i've arrived at but you know these are greek stories this is western creation myth but it's beautiful i i love it uh, yeah 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 it makes great yeah sense and and uh, and and why not and also that that the, the return of the vessel um to get back to your clay your cob that the original pandora before she was misogynized by hesiod in 2700 years ago is yeah. it's a vessel is a fermenting jar um to brew the wine for those you know the three days of the the orgiastic wine drinking to connect to the dead as a festival um and yeah. you know that th this is uh so the ills of man is like the hangover from the microbes that brew that turn um great juice into into wine that then enable this sort of like um psychoactive uh uh movement into the realm of the dead into underworlding and of course all the crap and the baggage and the you know domestic violence and all the 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 shocking things that come from that are definitely part of that but in terms of yeah. on the way there in this sort of in these celebrations these gatherings of um of of kin and village uh to to honor the dead to recommune with um lost ancestors and loved ancestors uh, yeah. that 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 kind of sacred beginnings before the you know the 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 devolution of of those three days into you know chaos and then the rebuilding of order and you know that would have to happen before the next the next one but this is yeah, yeah. 
these are the sort of um and it, you know i'm not romanticizing i'm not like clinging to this i'm not i'm not like saying yes. i want to go back there it's just um to reinstate pandora as the goddess of fermentation an underworlding above worlding first mother has been uh, referred to as gaia pandora has been gaia and now she's sub subjugated to people so like understanding through a box which erasmus the christian scholar i think in the fourth century erasmus you know d deleted the jar the fermenting vessel and ended up being a box you know <laughs> so her story is like pandora's box and so it's like you know it's it's a corrupted story and it's a misogynistic yes. story now yes uh, and again, a reason. There's a reason for that. There's this kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it connects with, um, uh, with it, with with this kind of uh, taking of the land. Yes. Yeah. Theft. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's, the, it's the, a theft of a of a story which had meaning. It it had a structure outside of the reason and enlightenment uh space mm. uh that that uh, that could could lead to magic could lead to uh these stories are a bridge to these structures of of thinking and and like this pantheon pantheistic like you say relating to a kind of complexity that st stand stand at out, outside of and kind of really I've become the basis of a of a of a hope mm. that is stronger has the deeper str strength because it's a deeper time than the present worries of technology of what it what I guess would be the Promethean yeah. impulse <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's threatening to kind of engulf the world but it never it can it never will is because it can never do that. Yeah. I think that's what I was trying to mm. so, some of what I was trying to um get to in the um in in the um in the comment was that that was, it's okay. Mm. Don't have to worry about that. It's not our business. Mm. And that our business I, I, I like is, that. To, is to get on with with explaining or exp not explaining but embodying and mm. gifting the joy of of the fer of the fermentation mm. of the compost of the complexity which is which is in inherently decentralizes uh mm. the power that they seek to centralize as it were you know but can but never will by the laws these very kind of laws that are beyond laws they're just kind of by a sort of isness of of mother country you know see that's where i was kind of relating to your um to your kind of building of that not building of, of your opening of that space the church of the mother country i was sort of mm. relating to it at that point of that kind of um that it, that it is um beyond beyond them mm. beyond yeah. us I, that's the I, beauty of it yeah, and I, I love that. And it reminds me, um, being a much younger man, and I was at a men's um, gathering here, and David Holmgren um, was sitting beside me at the at the table, and I was just saying, I've just come out of this, uh, well, I'm still in it, actually, this fog. I've just watched The World According to Monsanto, which was this incredible expose of monsanto's agenda um it you know wanted 100 percent ownership of the world's seeds and basically it's chemicalized agricultural um promise to its shareholders um and it, it was really frightening it was it was terrifying and meg and i were in this three-day grief hole this is when we first got together and we were just working out how we wanted to be and david just <laughs> just beautifully saying this is bullshit science it will it will <laughs> it will it will wreck a lot of things but it will fall over 
like all bullshit yeah. science. And and I just the relief and the release uh, that happened in that moment because I totally trusted him and I totally got I totally saw it immediately. Of course, a reductionist science or you know right to take it because scientism is just one part of the monster or the machine what what people like paul king's north are calling the machine or referring back historically to other writers like orwell and huxley um and you know so, some some people are you know, using the morlock um myth as as the kind of embodiment of of basically this big technocratic um monster that is eating the earth and is on this um, path of the last tree standing, the last fish in the in the river, um, um, economic uh, mentality. And so, to continually, what I'm hearing from you and what you what why you've reminded me of that moment uh, of of light of lightness that David offered me was that and i continually have to relearn this is that i get um you know i i i i dip in to see where morlock is where hyper techno civility is where the machine is from time to time get terribly depressed and think <laughs> and feel the you know and this is the illusion that you're talking about because yes. it's not an illusion that <clears throat> a big fuck off highway has just taken out a whole lot of sacred aboriginal trees to to cut 20 minutes off a of a trip between melbourne and adelaide that's not an illusion but the illusion is the the fear generation in the mind that this society will just take out it, not just ev not just the indigenous sacred trees but everything that is sacred um yeah. I haven't put that very well, but not not these particularly old timer trees that have deep cultural resonance with first people, with Jabberong people, but actually any little sapling or any that doesn't even have yet this cultural reverence. It's just this um, machine world mentality that um, we can live in the metaverse um, with goggles and just, you know, somebody's going to... Um, you know take out the trash can at some point some bot and um we can just like shit in the corner and th and and <laughs> of the room and someone will hopefully hoover that up but you know that we can just um you know create this utopia in 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 the metaverse and everything will be cool and you know even homeless people will be you know be able to fantasize about living in mansions and you know what whatever whatever the reality is is coming obviously this is not my area <laughs> but to to drop back into a kind of barefoot um cosmology in an old tip full of sharp objects and have to be surrounded by sheep and you know this is an old mine so there's um sort of a a a, uh, a sacrilegious to mother country there's a sacrilegious set of histories here and that that's the materiality of which to grow um one's uh seriousness to the sacredness while also and this is where i'm hearing you and why i loved your comment is the pitchforking of the seriousness as well and so not that you know i'm flippancy and jokes and even gossip are not really on my radar right now but yeah. certainly lightness and dance and looseness and playing um with my son and being um you know uh able to like you know one of the things that i love to do at at the forest school is just like be walking along and then throw myself into a big blackberry brambles for the, and then get up and just you know laughing and laughing and laughing and so this is to to sort of um give children the permission to 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 take pain and to you know which you could read as ascetic but actually it's quite you know ridiculous um yeah. to, to seek that out and and to have fun with that as a part of mammalian play like what happens when we do find ourselves 
you know, entangled with blackberry canes. And um, but what 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 happens when we actually put ourselves in there on purpose? Totally, I think that's what, I, and that that was my my questions were because I knew the answer was yes. You know, where, is it abundant? Yes, and and I wanted to hear that because uh, I I knew I I'd always sensed that and got that in 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 your work, your work together, mm. and. Um, it's great to see the sheep eating your eating your kind of hat or your basket or your you, you know and and like you say the the kind of uh, almost the, the the sublime absurdity of of of, of sitting barefoot in this in this <laughs> old dump you know with your sheep that you're gonna eat you know it is it is amazing it's what it is it's wonderfully embodied of the of the of, of of this this um uh all all of these things about the peasant mm. you know that, is, that i see that is kind of kind of um so whole so sort of uh, uh it, it is uh all of those things it's a kind of sort of a sort of weird you know uh like tramp warrior of mm. of of the uh uh, you know it's a, it's a great space it's a great space i mean uh, and i wanted to um and because the other person in this in this space who is a great uh inspiration that covers monsanto that covers and and in a way when i talk about gossip in some ways it's like it's something uh you know that i've heard uh, we've spoken about with it with my partner alice that there is that in indigenous um peoples do a great deal of you know it's just sort of you're sitting around and just chatting just talking the who's who's doing what and all the rest of it but mm -hmm. on some levels i i I'm, i think of um um vandana shiva mm -hmm. and her the the kind of energy that she embodies in terms of her her fierce um uh, knowledge mm. you know and strength mm. and but but that that she makes me smile i'm just like I, 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 like grinning when i'm listening to her because yeah. it and and, and that the, the, she's going after these guys you know fully you know what i mean and and like it's a kind of gossip about you know bill gates is doing this and you know these these guys are doing that and they're they're all the really naughty boys and it's it's kind of um of course it's deeply uh important stuff but the the manner in which she engages with it is both serious and joyous yes and that kind of like and that is the 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 kind of those pillars are un, unbelievably powerful um mm. and um and this you know to, which connects with the feminine it's almost like we need to recede from the space as men but then i think i, I you know that i'm not sure about that and and i i find i find um I, i'm doing involved in a, quite a lot of men's work at the moment and yeah i'm part of a, the men's lodge at the school of mythopoetics which is a virtual um men's group i'm i co-facilitate a, a men's group here in the forest um which is called fire choir where we get together and we uh we sing and we sound and we share and we cry and we laugh and um it's very very beautiful uh that that well the, both those groups and then i'm also a rites of passage guide for fathers and teenage sons um rites of passage and so i'm getting um like this incredible nourishment from men who uh, are taking their masks off and including myself and being in a vulnerable place being um held um we're all a kind of creating a each of us have a responsibility to create a container where vulnerability is openly encouraged encouraged or given agency for and so um this is yeah this is just deeply nourishing work we haven't like really touched on this much on online it, it, it's it's both ancient and yet 
completely contemporary this this work mm. It, mm. it's like getting in touch with um our, our male selves before men were subjugated to being you know in that dominator protector um hard uh shell the kind of corrupted warrior whereas when i hear uh indigenous men speak about being a warrior it is the range of from everything from holding the baby to getting the baby to sleep right through to standing on the edge of the village with a spear saying no you cannot enter and yeah. everything in between that and that that kind of range i know that we all had and yeah. um, from the nurturer to the warrior in a, in the full protect protector mode and so um in many ways men are now asked to step into that nurturing role so that can alleviate women of that in order to for women to then uh you know move further into what i what meg calls empire feminism um which is sort of like um a kind of uh mas masculinizing the feminine and i, yes. I you know this this is very complex territory yeah, here yeah. there's there's yeah 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 i feel yeah. i feel like a fully integrated fully integrated human or adult is um in touch and developed in both their feminine and masculine and yeah. that there isn't this sort of essentialism going on and there's not an anti anti-essentialism either which is just kind of another form of polarity or binary yes but actually yeah. but actually knowing when to draw on the feminine and knowing when to to draw on one's masculine depending on what you know what sex we are the, the what i'm seeing in younger men is this unwillingness to step into their full masculinity there, there's a huge amount of encouragement to uh draw on their femininity which is fantastic but yeah. there's this absolute reticence to step into uh, a full masculinity so we're seeing like demasculinized very sensitive beautiful young men who are impotent um who uh have you know huge hold a huge amount of shame um yeah. Who, yeah. who have who have depression and anxiety and of course yeah. men are killing themselves at, at a very high rate much higher rate yes, yes ending up in the prison system or you know with high levels of addiction um so yeah this this sort of subjugation of the masculine has created a kind of um real problem um and one one of the film videos we talked about this returning rumbling and play fighting back into into the village through our forest and free school our, our little bush school yes um yeah. where where the boys just started rumbling and it was like well this is we were t were totally cool with this but uh, we felt like we needed to explain it and i you know i really love krishnamurti's advice against explaining but i th i feel like it's really political to allow boys to rumble um because it's seen as encouraging male aggression whereas actually i feel the opposite is true that if you yeah allow men or boys to um to go through that and to find kinship in that kind of even if it gets out of hand even if someone gets a whack in the in the face and you know there's tears and to to go through those those processes and through those emotions and through that understanding of one's um own strength and getting into relationship with body through rumbling and it's not e exclusively a male thing either some of the girls join in as well yeah totally. but, but often often it's it's mostly the boys who who want to rumble and just just the way in which they're organizing that with the older older kids like overseeing and making you know, kind of being umpires in a way and pulling things up and you know calling circles when things do get out of hand and so that this I don't know really where I'm going with this, but <clears throat> I feel like there is a massive social 
problem with demasculinizing men and that of course uh the the kind of toxic masculinity that has got us mm. to that place is yeah. is of course a thing and, yeah. and i say this this has the 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 roots of men being put down mines and into factories and and exiled from the household so megan and from, and from the land and from the land of course and, and from other country yes it yeah, is it, other right, country. Think, yeah yeah to 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 root it right back to this church yeah yeah and ultimately the reconnection with that to kind of get the people out of there you know and to find ways to re-establish uh community community on land is the is it it because it because it, it can't happen with that we will always be working in a kind of abstracted space a kind of uh what would you call it a kind of anti anti room of of the machine yeah. you know what i mean however rarefied it may be uh so we we have this issue and 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 um and and every every time we try to uh um uh to to define the problem mm. when we're not in relationship with country we then we 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 always it will we'll always find it that it is somewhere else yeah you see what i mean yeah. so the problem isn't with masculinity or it or its lack of or in the extremes of that it's it, it's in its in its disconnection from a land base the, the 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 issue the problem is is unless we're we're standing within you know on a land base within a commons within a community that 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 we 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 can never we'll always be talking about an abstraction of the issue yeah. it won't be the it, that what and and once we we've established or re-established if you like or, uh, or or connected to the land and land base again then the 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 issue will in its very nature change completely i mean one of the things that um i see in your work is that you you're embodying that movement and that that uh you know the and the joy and abundance of that and the and the and the healing uh and that that i'm hearing through the work that you're doing in the in the local town um that obviously brings up a kind of anxiety but but the but the but you are in the position of intervention um the the the, the issue being that the that we you can't connect everyone with the land you don't hmm. you're not an aristocrat with 20,000 acres who yes. could resettle everyone you know and resettle those villages um and resettle people and and young men and women in work that is actual work that is good work that is is uh is crop and and a craft We're, and and set them on their own journeys to a to a a, a process of in of, of of coming to their own sense of those things mm. uh, yeah yeah i feel like that's such an important part of this conversation is just the the return or reclamation of commons and obviously a lot of that has taken place um in a virtual sense and the internet was this great promise of commons um and to a to a degree it still is but it yes. it, it comes at a price but um this the commons of physical of mother country um where you know, there is marginal unwanted unseen land um mm -hmm. for landless permaculturalists farmers mm -hmm. or wannabe farmers or growers or village rebuilders whatever you want to call it because like yeah. most of the work that we do or most of the labors that take place it's land that's supposed to be managed by some instituted space by some bureaucracy and it's not because they're even in 
a wealthy country like Australia, there's just so much land, small population. And so if you get out of the cities, there's yeah. all this possibility for um, feral commons or re-performing commons. Um, yeah. uh, in the in the tricky and problematic um, political terrain of stolen country, so you know over the years we've had pushback from kind of uh, those I, I guess people who want to stay in the abstract, who want to stay uh, positioned in some sort of Marxist ideology or some sort of you know urban um, academy position that you know you just cannot be doing what you're doing it's not right it's not properly um it's you know it's another form of colonization and it it may well be intellectually um that um to those people um and but to us it, it's it's the opposite uh, it is a kind of um and that that's the the i guess the teachings of mother country that this place in placing intimacy that you uh if you open to um the more than human learnings of land or teachings of land uh it's it's all there it, your entire education yeah. un unfolds for you without yeah without yeah. any money without any it's just a uh, it's just a set of re relationships that you lean further and further and further into and so commons um it doesn't even need to be on so-called crown land i mean that's what we call it in australia the the crown <laughs> the crown land. i mean this is how uh archaic um but how how the political you know and i, yeah. I don't even you know I, I i can't i can't come at writing the word australia anymore or even using it except yeah, in descriptions like this it, it is basically a colonial state it's a um it that australia is just really um the lie of terra nullius it, it has no other meaning for us uh so so what what we find ourselves in meg as uh from her her old people are from palestine and that are all Jewish on both sides, Palestine and um, and uh, Russia and Poland and places like that, and my old people yeah. from Ireland and Scotland and England and Wales and Germany and France and a bit of Norse, and so um, you know we we arrived here. Well, my my old people arrived here is either free or in chains, and you know I I get born on a high rising. Camaragal people's country in Sydney in a hospital and and I start my life and my consciousness in, on the, in this form uh, as a as a settler and you know I, I it's been this long winding 50 year path to um to arrive at the utter possibility the the exciting and um uh yeah life um feeling possibilities of mother country and and that has taken a lot of private and personal work like going out in country and fasting for several days and just deep listening and emptying yeah. out and uh, um and then also just the 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 collective stuff the lighting of a fire the, the listening to country that we do to start every so rather than some sort of boring bureaucratic um you know acknowledgement of country um a lot of my indigenous friends i've i've asked i've consulted and said you know would you prefer you know deep listening or um in in terms of acknowledgement or um like heartfelt acknowledgement where we just basically speak from the heart or or do you would you prefer we went through the ropes and you know went through the standard and if they all say of course from the heart like there's just no question about it so you know just learning to speak um just even even the awareness um raising with with the kids of you know just starting with the the playfulness of 
their, you know, uh, inviting them to take off their shoes and socks on a cold winter's morning and yeah, yeah. Um, feeling the coldness of mother country and the and the and the heat of father fire and then having a yarn about that those two the the interactivities of those the the interconnection of this old wood that's made by sunlight and growing in country and you know is is now tra being transformed into something else a a story tool or a, a vessel for um possibility and yet underneath is just all of life herself surging uh these negative ions through our body and interacting with our positive ions and like bringing us down dropping us down into country through that naked connection under our feet and the you know the simple tellings of that can lead to gratitude and awareness of what our lives literally are held by literally yes all, you know and of course through food and foraging um as as you know through your practices of foraging that hand to mouth that that direct connection with ecology through being eaters um not farmers that are under the pump uh, necessarily that to get uh, produce to market and have lost that sense of uh, reverence for life um, just because of the economic model, but maybe, uh, and this is the return to subsistence. This is why subsistence economies, I feel, are, are, are the the unspoken. Um, you know, it's like it's like, you're, it's like you're you'll never get funding for um, Cobb how <laughs> building projects with kids. It's the same with subsistence. You can ne not even like have the conversation in most circles um in our culture yeah. it, it has to be yeah. a growth um monetary model um yeah. and money, money has to grow and it's the only way it works and so so we're locked into this uh schizophrenia of um a world wanting to to save itself like the the age newspaper here is you know the editorial uh, position for years decades have been we've got to go back to paris and sign that agreement and we've got to bring down emissions and we have a carbon uh, emergency and we have a climate emergency and they never say we've got a consumption emergency and they always continue with the 40 pages of where your next holiday can be so it, it's this bullshit um approach to uh, you know, on the one hand, getting us all feared up about carbon and climate, which are fundamental parts of life. And yet yeah. it's actually consumption that is tipping the balance, is 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 breaking down uh, ecologies, it's hoovering up oceans. And yet, you know, you so you read your sort of like bourgeois media on that, and then you book in at the end of the paper, you book in for your next trip to Bali. This is the psyche of of yeah. the of the dominant um, hegemonic uh, ideology that's not seen as an ideology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's okay. still the idea that it's all going to be all right yeah. if we just switch up the. Uh, but you know, there's some good. There's you know, you must know Dr. Simon Michaud and you know who, who who's put crunch the numbers and mm -hmm. you know we just know that that's not going to happen. I, I follow you know Chris Mage. Uh, small farm future oh yes so, yeah 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 yes yeah. so we it is this ruralization this return to uh subsistence we we have we're working on this plan is it really is it's like a uh uh it, it it's on it's on paper but we're we're looking at uh, what we're calling care the care home farm mm. uh which has a care home at the center and is you know what we're calling unretirement homes about 20 families it's about 60 young people space you know kind of warehouse barn warehouse living uh you know about 30 businesses each interacting with one another to create and give the 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 things that we need for a good life and um and uh you know there would be a, a good cafe as part of that and we're going to have to figure out how to sort of uh, trade for coffee kind of thing yeah and that's like uh we have chicken yeah, 
<laughs> landing in chicory <laughs> we'll, we'll take what we can get yeah and uh you, you know it's it's that uh we're calling it into sufficiency rather than self-sufficiency right so this uh, you know the idea that um it really is the recreating the village really? but uh, but trying to try to break it down into its constituent parts and sort of really see what it what are the what's the material reality of this what are, what are we going to need and how do we, you know how how do we feed and and how you know what how do we heat the spaces you know and and you know that they, they're in therein is the uh the the straw bale houses yeah um but but and how do we care uh for you know so that we really in terms of the, these multiple crises that are kind of like emerging that we're we're facing looking at you know care is one of them and and, and elderly care is a, is another of these kind of uh kind of it social issues that you could sort of say uh, akin to the male uh suicides and and uh and young 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 male uh issues it is that this treatment of our elderly as a as a uh these are tells i see them as they kind of they tell the lie that and and also they reflect back to us the the what is happening in the world that we can't look after our old folk mm. anymore in a in a kind of meaningful and, and uh, respectful way, um, and the and in in the end no one's going to do it, so we have to do it. Yeah. And I kind of take I take uh, I take uh, what is it sort of energy or 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 inspiration from the from you know Malcolm X. From the black power movement that 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 no one's going to do this absolutely for us yeah it's not going to happen people you need to get on this and yeah. do this itself and part of the kind of inviting people into the joy of doing it because it's not a chore it's a it's a it's a trip it's a great you know making your own cloth you know to make your own clothes can you imagine when you're wearing it you're just like we um we we know this guy and i've got to i've got to make a shout out to alan um he's got a film out called the nettle dress mm, yeah. you've got to see it, everyone really if anyone who's interested is he and and he has you know because we started uh this conversation and we would we were going to talk about grief and i think we kind of we're we're talking about it yeah um we, and but we don't necessarily have to talk about it in that way but yeah he's he went on this journey it took him like five years to he would go out with his dog and and just collect nettles and he, he'd wreck them dry you know do the whole process and then he was like i've got all this got all this material okay i'm going to weave it into a piece of cloth and every, every process was new to him mm. and 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 he he um his his partner uh died you know and this was a process for him and he could and but it it's joyful mm. you know uh the mm. it's a great great it was made by his friend and it the film is made over seven years mm. and and um it's a really a big shout out to those guys so see see if you can uh, uh, get a get a yeah. screening of it out there it's a it's a it's a real kind of embodiment of the of of these things that we've been talking about in terms of like how mm. we are going to move through this and and he he's a he's a uh, uh would be a great guy to speak to himself I yeah. think Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys would really hit it off. Uh, he's he, um, but it, it, yes, the craft, the joy of making things for ourselves, mm. you know, yeah. and to not be party and power to, and that feels to me like the only way out of this. Yeah. The only way out. Yeah, I I hear that. A couple of weeks ago, we 
uh, taught the the kids to um, yeah put on a leather glove and go into the forest and pull keep the blackberry um, cane in the ground and then pull against it and dethorn the canes and then to collect twenty or so canes and then to come back sit around the fire and each of us made a basket and some had had a little bit of experience others was starting from scratch and it wasn't too prescriptive it's not like here here's how you make a basket um but here are some techniques and so by just sitting with them and doing it ourselves uh, meg and i um a whole all these baskets appeared in different forms and over the course of a few hours and some left them and went and did other things and came back to them and found that someone had picked them up and you know actually kind of created the form a little better and all of a sudden they're going oh that's my basket I, I'm going to finish that and but but just that relationship to Blackberry now that you have um, just like your friend with singing nettles just when you go deeply into a plant like that and transform that common thing into something of beauty of relationship um you know we, we do a lot of foraging in the forest and um the kids now know how to make a basket so if they haven't you know if they're out and about they can pretty quickly make something to a vessel um because yeah. blackberry is everywhere here yeah just oh, that yeah. that the the point of craft how craft is this access um between human um human culture making and the culture making of a of a biome the the more than human culture making of a biome so yes. that's the blackberry yes. blackberry has this this culture that's um you know often derided and poisoned and um hated on by mostly yeah mostly set settler folk here in australia um but it's it has its own culture it's it's actually interacting with mother co country mother country rejects like we we we've planted in the forest indigenous trees that were made somewhere else and mother country has made sure they don't grow yeah. And there's other indigenous trees where mother country makes allows to grow and what i mean by mother country is like this the sentience the culture of yeah. the forest yeah. what does the yes. forest need and um trees can literally starve out other young saplings from trying to get up so if the so blackberries are part of the culture of mother country here and um and and so then when we when we bring our culturing crafting hands to to blackberry and create the vessel the pandorian vessel in yes order, in order to to continually ferment more possibilities into the lives of children it's just you know it is that movement beyond morlock beyond the machine world fixation that is so easy yeah. to have yeah it's it's the thing it's the thing that uh that kind of lives on lives under it i mean i, I was um like i say i was looking re, uh, hearing a bit more about McLuhan, mm. and um he was a medievalist and the i and i, and I was learning about the trivium which is that it, the the uh, the logic and rhetoric and grammar so and and this this kind of triumvirate becoming the sort of basis of 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 medieval education so the so and and but within craft i was kind of seeing seeing that the the, the grammar is nature mm -hmm. is mother country it, because it's the materials it's the materiality of of things so whether it be the blackberry or the wood or the stone or the the the, the clay mm. the very earth itself you know it it's all it um and then and then um you know the 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 logic because they 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 uh and the rhetoric then become a kind of uh if you like inspiration or, or kind of self-expression mm. uh and and um the logic being the kind of um the the embodied 
kind of uh, uh, movement that you can make on those on nature and on the on the, within but within it's the limits of the materiality of it mm. sort of thing mm. and and the, the, so there, there there's a kind of thing that lies beneath this moloch which is the real uh living people's lives and and their their you know their 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 being their eating their, their you know they they are growing we are we all will do whether we live in the city or whether we live it you know what i mean however far away we live we will need to eat food um it, we will need to drink water and, the, and those hydrological and and kind of like like seasonal cycles are, cannot ever be left so that's the that underpins the sort of phantom illusion of the of this idea that you can yeah leave it there is no transhuman reality because it can you could never be transhuman it's a kind of it's a kind of undoing of of logic you know and but it is it's it's a kind of abstraction of those of the of, of this uh it, because learning about the trivium and 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 sort of seeing and and the 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 uh, person who was speaking about it was talking about that oh you know everyone had this knowledge and I was kind of thinking well no not everyone did have the knowledge of grammar and what well, what well, not everyone was literate in that way and that literate knowledge being the basis of of the kind of Promethean mm. space. Yeah, that and, and the further and further abstraction. It's a techne, you know. Grammar is a techne. Is a, a you know, I think Plato was all about techne, and he was against rhetoric and and the, yeah. Yeah. it's a kind of historical thing that I don't completely understand. But it, for me, there's something that is pre, is pre literate, as it were, which is craft, which is this thing that you can intuitively, yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, approach and I think it's that in, intuition which I find it, it, is so kind of exciting and, and kind of like has the possibility of of, of this kind of wonderful failure mm. that, that, it, that upturns mm -hmm. the, the the kind of um, uh, approach uh, because we don't need to know things to be able to enter the church of mother country we can do it intuitively yeah. with an open heart with a kind of like a willing a curiosity and a willingness to kind of like mm. uh uh be there yeah uh, this is, so, this so. beautiful this is the re restoration of pandora in that matrilineal first telling of the story where the story is etched onto the vessel, the fermentation vessel. It's not written down. And I'm just aware of the the the, the that the pictorial telling the story of um of the goddesses uh, of fermentation and the uh, of underworlding with um with the with, with the possibility of wine as a as a kind of gate gateway to underworlding or whether it be you know psychoactive mushrooms or whatever that that kind of uh that that you know that pandora was crafted out of clay by heptatus the the craft god the industry god the um and then the uh the fermenting vessels holding the original story of pandora before it was misogynized by hesiod and and you know hesiod being um several hundred years before socrates who then you know in this misogynistic rewriting of the theogony of the greek greek religion from matrilineal or at least distributed gender um to a gender lopsidedness where you where you have the the uh the beginnings of um a highly patri patriarchal Western culture kicking in and Socrates saying, I have nothing to learn from trees and fields. I only have uh, things to learn from men. So this, this, um, this sort of slow step-by-step -step subjugation of uh, intuition, of insight, of gut logic, what I call gut logic. Yes, 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 yes. 
Gail Thomas um, is an American scholar and a feminist who has really done a lot to bring the story of Pandora to replace uh, yeah. Pandora in her rightful rightful place. Um, and yeah, I, I'll share that link in the description that, uh, of a book of hers called um, literally that, um, Restoring Pandora or something like that. But we're, we are, you know, we're, we're running out of time. We've had such a great yarn and we could i think i could go on all back day there again i'm back a, there again yeah 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 almost, exactly. almost midnight where you are and yeah yeah, yeah. we're uh, getting on and you got a day you've got a day to to get to yes yeah thank you get on really wonderful to connect joel and thank you so much for coming in um to our little nook of the of the interwebs and leaving such <laughs> A beautiful comment which triggered this conversation and i i just love yeah the the non-agenda of this that neither of us are, are like um sitting in this place of position um necessarily like we're obviously i love that inter into um sufficiency i feel like that riffs beautifully with what we've brought in terms of community sufficiency and really moving away from um privatized notions of self-sufficiency and I, I just yeah like it, the I enjoyed the um yeah the the toing and froing and the um and the yeah the connection the the deeper connection than so much deeper than a comment but but the comment was the was the key or the or the trigger to this so thank you I'm really happy I'm really happy to to speak to you it's, it's great you know I, I feel like I know you from from obviously from seeing you but but um yeah I, and I always felt like yeah that was there so it's it's great it, it is great I feel like this trying to remain in this space of not knowing mm. and joy and 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 with with, with humor I think that's that's uh, important for us to to um uh, to cultivate that resilience you know and we can do that together i'm not I, by any means a, 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 a always have that mm. uh i'm a like you uh a serious uh and sometimes you know to a, a tendency to kind of uh move into a a, a deep ambivalence mm. about the about the world and about the this path but um yeah it it to 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 uh be to move forward and to present the joy of this journey which you have done and embodied and 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 made clear to many many people i think you know the thank you uh, and and to meg and to your son and you know and, you, and your community that you work with you know thank you it's mm. a it's, it's a great thing it's it's a it's an inspiration it's a uh it's a guiding light it's a you know you know to yeah we we, we might we've got to find the fellow travelers on the road and and uh you know yeah just knowing that we're all out there man we're, we're, we're with you you know so feeling it just uh feeling yeah. it and just you know yeah and likewise it, you, your projects are just yeah inspiring to hear with the kids and with what you're you're planning towards with your um community with your village rebuilding it's so keep us posted and stay connected yeah. and even if we yeah. do go even if we do go offline we'll we'll definitely have um a uh, snail mail address we can, right. we can write some slow letters which would be lovely i'm happy to do that i love that yeah. I love that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so great to meet you, and thank you for for agreeing to come on and and sharing and bringing your thank spirit. You, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, really, I'm very happy, very yeah. happy to. All right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace, bro.